these very same people are the quickest to cry racism at the slightest provocation or for no reason at all. There's no systemic racism, there is no law, there is nothing that says that I can't do something as a black person that you can do. We're honoring all of the great white men who are being smeared and defamed and torn down. Are you familiar with the concept of post-conviction relief regarding Louisiana convicted felons? According to EricGJohnsonLaw.com, post-conviction relief provides a way for convicted individuals to try to have their convictions overturned or their sentences reduced. In some instances, post-conviction relief may even involve having a new trial ordered. A person can only pursue post-conviction relief when they have already tried to appeal their case or the time to appeal has passed. Rather than advancing through the court system to the appellate level, post-conviction relief requires the defendant to petition the judge who heard the original case because there's new information regarding the case that would have affected the outcome. Additionally, laws at the state or federal level could have changed. By filing an application for post-conviction relief, the defendant can raise any of the previously mentioned issues to the judge in an attempt to have the conviction overturned or the sentence reduced. Sounds like a reasonable process to provide fair resolution to suspect convictions. It is one which New Orleans District Attorney Jason Williams seems to be using effectively to help people convicted years ago get reduced sentences by pleading guilty to reduce charges. But in a potential case of no good deed goes unpunished, Clancy Dubose writes in yesterday's Advocate Opinion section that Williams' policy of revisiting old cases that he believes were not adjudicated fairly has caught the attention of conservative lawmakers and tough on crime State Attorney General Liz Morrill. They express concern about the frequency of Williams supporting defendants' requests for post-conviction relief. DuBose quickly adds, many DAs occasionally agree to review past convictions when new evidence suggests that justice was not done. Post-conviction relief is not just legal, it's often necessary. Williams champions post-conviction relief. When he ran for DA in 2020, he promised to establish a civil rights division with the express goal of reckoning with the sins of the past, particularly those dealing with people convicted by non-unanimous juries. In 2020, the United States Supreme Court outlawed split jury, non-unanimous verdicts for people accused of serious crimes. The case was Ramos versus Louisiana, and it corrected a historical wrong propelled more than a century ago by white supremacy and xenophobic fervor. But the decision only applied to open cases and convictions that were under appeal at the time of the ruling. The justices left it to Oregon and Louisiana, the only two states that permitted non-unanimous verdict, to decide whether to apply the decision. Not surprisingly, Louisiana took a pro-prosecution approach. Oregon, the state Supreme Court said these cases must be given a new look. But in Louisiana, only a handful of prosecutors have agreed to revisit past convictions decided by split juries, what critics call Jim Crow juries. Referring to Dubose's opinion piece, he concedes that most DAs seldom enter into post-conviction plea deals as a matter of policy and politics. They prefer to burnish their tough on crime brands rather than risk looking weak by showing mercy, even but D.A. Williams made a promise, and he kept it. Imagine that. In the three-plus years that he has served as Orleans Parish D.A., Williams' office has supported hundreds of post-conviction relief motions that led to reduced sentences and some releases from prison. Williams was elected D.A. with 58% of the vote from Orleans Parish, defeating a 20 former trial court and a Attorney General Jeff Landry is Landry's criminal division chief, a position he continues to hold under Attorney General Liz Morrell. I'm shocked. Did I mention that District Attorney Jason Williams is black? 
Did I mention that District Attorney Williams is a native New Orleanian, a graduate of Tulane University and Tulane Law School, a former member of the New Orleans City Council, and a successful criminal defense attorney? In fact, his earliest defenses of poor criminal defendants was through Tulane's criminal law clinic. But now, Dubose reports that Williams is about to face the ire of the governor, Jeff Landry, and Attorney General Liz Morrell controlled state legislature. Act 10 of the governor's special session on crime imposes strict time limits on deals struck years after a conviction and authorizes Morrell to challenge such deals. The new law took effect on August 1st. Williams seems to have no problem defending his actions before the legislature. He says that he's merely upholding justice, a legal and ethical mandate for all DAs. I cannot turn a blind eye when evidence is presented in a court of law to an injustice or violation of the Constitution that must be dealt with. New Orleans for decades had the highest imprisonment rate, the highest wrongful incarceration rate, the highest life without parole rate, and the highest exoneration rate of any city in the country. That last part is quite important. Mr. Williams asserts that New Orleans has had the highest clearance rate of people wrongfully convicted of crimes in the nation. And just who might the overwhelming majority of those people wrongly convicted be? Black people? So when Governor Landry and Attorney General Morrill both staunch, ultra-conservative MAGA Republicans, along with their rubber stamp legislature, take aggressive measures to halt Mr. Williams in the fulfillment of his constitutional obligation to provide post-conviction relief where it is warranted, exactly who is it that they are trying to punish? Black people. Even former DA Canizaro had endorsed post-conviction deals when, they, when he was DA though far less frequently. Ultimately, the Act 10 law coming out of the special crime session of the legislature may face a constitutional challenge. This is because Louisiana's constitution gives district attorneys total discretion in handling prosecutorial matters. It allows the attorney general to intervene in or take over a local case only if the presiding judge consents to it. DuBose ends his editorial this way. In a convoluted 4-3 decision last year, the Louisiana Supreme Court allowed then A.G. Landry to successfully attack the constitutionality of a 2021 post-conviction relief statute, even though it's the A.G.'s duty to defend the constitutionality of all statutes. Yet the court stated that district attorneys have absolute discretion to support post-conviction relief when warranted because a prosecutor's responsibility is as a minister of justice and not simply of an advocate. With recent decisions coming from the Louisiana Supreme Court, I've come to expect nothing less than the inconclusiveness that cited ruling represents. Louisiana has the highest incarceration rate of any state in the nation, 1,067 per 100,000 people in 2023. Orleans Parish, which is made up entirely of the state's largest city of New Orleans has the most residents imprisoned at a rate of 652 per 100,000 residents. In Baton Rouge, the highest imprisonment rates are concentrated in predominantly black neighborhoods with higher poverty rates than the rest of the city. These communities do not necessarily experience higher rates of crime, according to research coming from Voice of the Experience or Vote, Redistricting Data Hub, and prison policy initiative. Fairfields, which is 96% black, has the highest imprisonment rate in the parish with almost 2% of its residents in state prisons, 1,773 per 100,000, more than three times the city of Baton Rouge's imprisonment rate. By comparison, Jefferson Drusilla, which is 70% white, has just 35 people in prison per 100,000 residents. I wonder how many of those in EBR have been convicted on charges that carry maximum sentences. I wonder how many of them have a right to post-conviction relief. I wonder what EBRDA Hiller Moore thinks about invoking himself into these criminal proceedings to bring about fairer sentencing. This is something we should pray about. Lord God, 
we pause this evening to ask for your grace, for your wisdom, for your design on our lives to become prevalent and prevail in this situation regarding post-conviction relief. We know, dear God, that there is a purpose for law and that there is a purpose for conviction. But we also know that there are those who abuse the privilege. There are those who are in positions of authority who have used it in such a way to mistreat some segments of our community. We ask, dear God, that you would give guidance to Governor Landry and his administration, to Attorney General Morrell, and to our legislature. Let your wisdom prevail on them, that they might be open to your leading so that Louisiana might experience the reality of our motto, union, justice, confidence. Cover us, dear God, with your love. Support us by your power. Motivate us by your Holy Spirit. Illumine us with your knowledge. Guide us into places where our desire is to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. In the name of Jesus, who is our Christ, we pray. Amen.